So some of the future videos are going to start including uh, .NET Core. We're going to start making some frameworks and things that uh, use the most up-to-date uh, code, which .NET Core is the new Microsoft .NET framework uh, that's truly cross-platform. So just go into Google, type .NET Core, and you can go to microsoft.com forward slash net forward slash core. Uh, and this, you can read all the documentation on here. We won't go too much through it right now. This is just the general uh, installing of .NET Core and showing you spinning it up. So if you've got Visual Studio 2015 already, you can go to help about inside Visual Studio and check if you've got update three. If you have, you don't need to do anything. If you've got it, but without update three, you can download just the update. Or if you've not installed anything yet, you can install it here. Uh, once you've got that installed, you then need to install the .NET Core preview tools. Simply click the button, save the file, run and install. I've got this tool so I won't need to do that one. Then go to downloads, .NET Core and you need to install the SDK here so it would be the 64 bit for Windows in this case. Um, so we click that and then it's 3156 as the version, save. All the SDKs go to C drive program files, folder called .NET, and then SDK. And you can see I've got them installed here. Um, so if I click and run this, I've already got this installed, but you'll see what I mean. You'll just get this installer, you go through, click OK, um, and then you'll get this folder here, this 3156. So if you want to check what SDKs you've got installed, they're in this folder. So once you've got those installed, you have everything you need to do .NET Core development. Uh, you also want to, uh, you can see LTS here, long term support. There's a current tab. And what's very recently just come out is .NET Core 1.1, which is a major improvement over the previous ones. There's a lot of added benefits to um, the framework. So you can always click current as well and install uh, like this SDK here. So let's go ahead and do that. So just click save. And I don't think I've installed this one yet. And there we go, and we click on this, agree and install, and then we go to this folder, you'll see it'll create a new folder for us that's just appeared there, and then it's installed. So now we've got .NET Core 1.1. We'll run through using that in a moment, but at the same time, uh, all future videos now are going to go to Visual Studio 2017. It's now in um, Release Candidate. So that's, that's good enough to be uh, working with. Uh, I've never really had much issues. Once, you, once they hit RC, it tends to be stable enough to, to use. So just type it into Google and then free download. I'm going to get the enterprise version here. Save and it's like a web installer. Just run the installer. Uh, be done with that. And then 2017 already comes with, uh, I'm pretty sure the tools installed but we'll download this afterwards just to be sure and install that as well and then we've got everything we need so the installer just asks you to agree so we'll agree to that and then this whole installer has been remade so compared to 2015 this is a much cleaner and much faster install uh, this will take probably 10 minutes tops to install and download the whole thing so I'm going to include Universal Windows Platform because again in future videos I'll cover these. This is basically um, the WPF framework for the most part but will work on Windows Phone, Windows Surface, um, Windows Computers, Xboxes, anything that runs on the Windows 10 um, operating system. You don't need to install that if you don't want to. You need the .NET um, desktop development. This is your standard stuff that you get in 2015. Uh, this is your old web code stuff. So I don't make any old websites, uh, but it might be required for getting um, CSS integration for editing some, uh, you know, JavaScript and CSS. So I'll install that anyway, um, because I'll be doing some web tutorial videos as well. And then the other main one is this .NET Core. Tick to in install that, and you can see it the side where it installs. Um, I'm also going to include mobile development for Xamarin, because again, I'll do videos on that shortly. And then I'm going to include extensions again just because I want to make some extensions in the future for 
creating things like um, blank templates based on a few other videos I'm doing like SolidWorks. Uh, so that's it, it's telling me the install size is 20 gig. Uh, that's not going to be the download size though. So I just click install. If I just open up uh, performance and go to Ethernet, uh, I should be able to get 200 megabits a second here. The internet I've got uh, maxes out around 200 megabit. Um, so you can see this thing is absolutely flying through. So it's probably going to be downloaded within three or four minutes and then installed in about eight or nine minutes. So I'll just leave this video running and then sort of fast forward this install through and let you know how long it took in total. So you can see there the download took five minutes, uh, five or six minutes. And what's left now is just installing. Uh, you'll find that the if you've installed Xamarin, which is what I included, that's pretty much all that's left for the um, the install. Otherwise, it would have been fully installed by now. So the rest of this installation is is entirely Xamarin. So this should take another probably four or five minutes. So I'll leave that going and then fast forward when we're done. So you can see that that's done, and I think it's taken uh, seven, eight minutes total. Uh, so that's it. So let's click launch. Let's see if this thing works. And then the first startup usually takes longer as well. Uh, we'll sign in later. Standard blue appearance, and we are a C sharp developer. And here's the nice new Visual Studio. So this looks cool. So the news has moved over here. We've sort of got this new uh, entire screen. The start page is you know, different. Uh, where's the new project moved to? Oh, so the new project is now, you sort of just start typing what you want. So let's say WPF. Oh yeah, and then it finds things. That's quite cool. Um, it's a bit of a different thing from what you're used to physically browsing. I'm guessing more project templates or simply open the classic view. Yeah, there we go. So that's a nice little change. Uh, so before we get too much into this, uh, let's just go to uh, back to the downloads. Then we've installed the 1.1. Let's just download the Visual Studio 2017 tools preview just to be sure in case this isn't installed. Um, make sure you install the .NET Core. Ah, so yeah, it's, it's basically included. So there's nothing else to do now. You install 2017 and you already have everything you need for .NET. So that's it for the downloads. Uh, if you want to get uh, going on .NET, you can go to .NET Learn um, and then .NET Core down here and go to say Tutorials and getting started on Windows, uh, Mac, Linux. Uh, and then you can you know browse through these and you can see that it's really simple so I don't need this up anyway to just quickly show you you can do it in Visual Studio but we're just going to do it in command line to start with so just open a command prompt uh, we'll go to documents and then we'll make a directory called test we'll go into the test folder and you'll see that um, the .NET call is just as much in command line as it is in Visual Studio because you have to bear in mind this is completely usable on Linux and Mac and Visual Studio doesn't exist on Linux and Mac um, so there's a whole the, the new .NET Core is almost entirely command line and then Visual Studio simply uses those command lines so we can actually create a full-blown um, .NET project from command line so we're in this test folder just type .NET mu and that will go ahead for the first time it'll do this little setup, expand and install. This will only happen once. Uh, and then it'll create, uh, when you do .NET new as default, uh, there we go, it's created a CS project and a program. And then you can just do uh, .NET restore because everything in .NET Core now works off NuGet packages. So even your own projects, if you create two projects and reference them together, you're referencing NuGet packages. I won't go too much into depth, but um, just bear that in mind. .NET build will then, you know, do your what usually F5 does. 
or what usually sorry control shift and b does to build the project and you can see it's it's run the build and it's output uh, a bin folder debug dot net core app and now it's a dll because again this can be run on multiple this could literally run on linux this exact dll uh, and then you can just use dot net run to actually run the program and then it says hello world so that's an actual um, .NET Core project that can be run on Mac, Linux and Windows and the only thing you've got is a, a CS proj file which is the new style and a program.cs so if we open that with well in fact we can probably just drag it into here there we go and that's as simple as it gets there's a static, there's a console.write line hello world and that's all there is to the whole program um, but then again the benefits of all this will come uh, later down the line. I just wanted to give you a very quick introduction to .NET Core and mainly installing Visual Studio 2017 because that's coming up in all the new videos. So we can close down the command line. We can do the exact same thing in Visual Studio. So file new uh, project and what we created there by default. So if you want to see all the .NET Core only stuff. You can either filter by .NET Core there, or you can click .NET Core here. Uh, you see, you get a little bit more when you type .NET Core here. Let's see what else we get? Yeah, so we get a few extra things doing it there. So by default, it created this console app. You can also create a, an ASP web. I've done a lot of this ASP web, and in fact, my Angel Six website's made on ASP .NET Core. It's, again, it's a, a million miles better than the previous. ASP.NET, it's so far advanced, it's really clean, you can run it inside of Linux in a Kestrel server, you can run it on um, IIS through a Kestrel bridge, uh, it's, it's just really cool what they're doing with this .NET Core. Um, and then you've also got a class library, uh, which is here, which doesn't show up as .NET Core because the class in it is a, a .NET standard. Um, so let's just create this console app, we'll leave it where uh, we're fine, just leaving it there. Call it console app one. Don't need another folder. Click OK. And then we'll just go and browse to that folder. Let's see if we can find it. Uh, D home documents 2017 projects. There we go, console app. And you can see it's created effectively the same thing. It's created a CS proj and the program which is exactly the same as what the command line did, but it's also created a solution just so it's open in Visual Studio. Uh, Control Shift B will compile just the same, and we should see the build output that's um, not open by default, interestingly. Um, and then F5 to run the application, and I'm guessing this will just open a command line window for us, which it did and then disappeared. Uh, so because we're not running from there, we'll just have to do console.read uh, just to halt the program so we can see it. And there's the same thing. You can see it's actually executed with program files .net, .net .exe, which I don't think actually exists. I think that's a, a link to just find the latest one. Oh no, it does. So this probably finds the, the latest .net out of here and runs a specific one. Um, so that's how .net uh, core works as a very you know quick and simple overview. So when we come to do .NET Core in future videos, you can start with this video just to get yourselves um, installed and ready to go with at least a, a basic application up and running. And then we'll go through the whole um, the process of uh, you know handling all the the new new things like the NuGet packages for referencing things. Um, but that just gets your Visual Studio installed for now, which was the main point. Um, and then the next videos. Um, on .NET you'll be a little bit more familiar with.